Hi, Frank. Hey, hey, Maggie. Hey, everybody. Uh, see, let me go on my hand now. That it's... Anyway, I, I want to add on a little bit to what uh, Olga was asking about. Because uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this whole... Um, the idea of knowing how we know that awareness is here. Like, what knows that awareness is here? How do we perceive awareness? And it seems like, from what I've been learning in some experiential stuff, that only awareness could know itself. So it kind of goes uh, along with what you guys are discussing, how the senses, we know, like, I've come to see that the senses could never uh, speak for awareness because they don't, we can shut them all off and awareness presence is still there. You can go into a uh, deprivation tank, sensory deprivation tank, and the person, quote unquote, although it's awareness, knows it's there. You can get a shot of anesthesia. And because I always thought, actually, one of the senses that I was really hung up on was the idea of touch. I thought the uh, sense of touch was the one that really said, hey, I'm here. But like I, you know, like I just said, I can be shot up with a shot of anesthesia, and I'll still know I'm there, whether or not I have uh, the sense of touch going. And that goes for the mind. I don't have to ask the mind. The mind doesn't have to do any analysis to know that I'm here if I ask it. Hey, am I here? I just I just know I'm here automatically. So there goes the mind. There goes the senses. Uh, so what else is there? There's really nothing else other than awareness to know that it's there, right? And See? the other thing I wanted to add on, add on to this is that when I've thought about even looking at that, it's almost like a separate – it's it's like the idea well, – I, I didn't even realize I was doing this, but I was going in – with the idea of being a separate person, looking to whether there was a separate person there. So then I realized it's <laughs> this is just stuff that feeds on itself, right. and it's really just awareness. But I do have a question regarding this. Uh, something I really have not been able to to understand yet is uh, if awareness is is what perceives. So awareness is perceiving, uh, and it's perceiving as a whole. So it's, it's never perceiving as a one. <laughs> you know, person, separate person. Uh, and, is it, and I've heard people say that it's watching. I don't know if you've ever used that term, that awareness is watching. But if awareness is watching, is it watching itself, which seems a little dualistic? Or how does that whole thing work? And, of course, I, I realize that it would be watching, like all of awareness would be watching, not just one part of it, and there's no separation, no localization anywhere. So can you talk about that a bit? Well, I don't recall referring to awareness as watching. I use the term viewing. In other words, uh, awareness perceives, you know, views. It's not watching. Watching has like a more of a a guard or watching for something. It is. It's more uh, more directed. Consciousness is effortlessly. Uh, open it's a, it's openness and and anything which appears uh, appears to consciousness so consciousness is effortlessly viewing um now what is it viewing what is it viewing it's viewing what we're viewing right now thoughts we call them thoughts perceptions sensations mentations whatever okay so we we classify uh the clouds, we could classify the images in thoughts, perceptions, and sensations. Now you ask yourself, well, where where, where do these uh, clouds arise from? That which consciousness is perceiving, the objects of perceptions, where do they arise from? Well, they can only arise from reality. Right, they cannot arise from La La Land, you know, <laughs> imaginary, you know, blue moon, blue men on the moon. They arise from reality. What is reality? Reality is consciousness. So, one could conclude that everything which arises, which appears, all manifestation, arises out of consciousness. And uh, what is it that views it? I view it. I consciousness view it. I view the thoughts. I view the sensations. I view the body. I view the world. So, a well, quick interjection here, Maggie. So this is where I get I get caught up on this because that to me seems still a little bit dualistic. How is it not dualistic? Well, 
okay, look at your night dreams, right? Let's say you dream that you're a bird flying, you know, over the mountains, right? The Is it dualistic? Is the bird, which you are, you are the bird flying. And you, the one that's dreaming, dreaming that you're flying, the, you're dreaming the bird. Are Are they two? They're not two, right? No, not in a dream. No, no, you're right. No, not in a dream. They're not two. This is uh, mm -hmm. so the fact that that you can dream something and view it. <laughs> you can even dr dream yourself to be riding a pink elephant, and, and and you're viewing the pink elephant, and you're viewing yourself in the you know the dream you riding the dream elephant. But there is no separation, no duality. So we have to look at the uh, like the daydream is basically is the same thing as the night dream. And then, what's as far that, as that goes? Yes. The, yeah. The waking state. Waking state is what I meant. Yeah. Uh, the waking state is like the dream state. It is composed of mm -hmm. thoughts, thoughts, perceptions, and sensations. In the dream state, they're more, let's say distant chaotic there is a sound here a different sound there while in the waking dream well there's this sound and that sound and this sound and, you know there is more let's say different organization or a different structure of that which appears but in essence they're similar whether you are dreaming a very orderly British, you know, meeting. No, oh, everybody's sitting properly, and you know, they're like by Jove, by Jove, every person is. Or whether you're dreaming a dance of uh, native Africans in Cameroon, you know, uh, a very different in in how they appear. One is very more orderly and the other is chaotic or seeming, I mean, different. In essence, they're just, they're just dreams. There is no separation. They're the same. The waking state and the dream state are two of the three states. The three states are the waking state, the dream state, and the deep sleep states. They're the three. Got it. That that's the piece I was missing. <laughs> that really was. I was just missing that one little piece. But uh, yeah, that really I really have a lot more clarity about that now. Yeah, it feels it just uh, just appears much more clear clearer to me now. All right, sorry, I cut I cut you off. Go ahead, Maggie. You finish saying what you what you were saying. Everything is consciousness. And we never experience, first, we never experience the absence of consciousness, right? How could we? In order to experience the absence of consciousness, something has to experience that. You know what I mean? Yeah, which is why the senses, which is, sorry to cut you off, which is why I realized. You can't look to the senses to tell you anything because they're without consciousness, they wouldn't even be known to be there. They wouldn't exist without awareness or consciousness, right? Yeah, well, you, you need to understand that when we make distinction between the senses, we say there's a sense of smell, the sense of the hearing, perception, etc. It's a conceptual distinction. It's there isn't like a a black and white uh, dividing line. This is this is the sense of smell, and this is the sense of hearing. There, the body is an integral whole. It, it's interconnected. It's all, they're all interconnected. It's the nervous system is one whole system throughout the entire body and it, it it's connected to the to the senses the perception the sense of smell it, it, so 
for a variety of reasons, we make these distinctions. It makes sense. But we need to understand that it's a whole system, right? And also, this the nervous system, the, the sanguinary system, all the systems that operate within the body are not separate from the universe. For example, the body, what would the body be without the human body I'm talking about? You know, without the atmosphere, uh, without gravity, without the ultraviolet rays that, you know, uh, the various energetic fields of the of of the galaxies, it, it's inter interconnected, right? And now, the human body is also part of the Earth, which feeds us and which we're supposed to care for it, and it nourishes nourishes us. So the point I'm trying to make is that. We make conceptual differences, classifications, but we need to take those classifications with a grain of salt because experientially, I'm not talking conceptually, experientially, it's all consciousness. We're not experiencing smelling something without awareness or consciousness or or perceiving or we what would be the sense of smell on its own <laughs> and one big nose <laughs> what would it be <laughs> right or like a huge ear you know it's just that's it it's just the sense of hearing You talk about body, we talk about the senses. Yeah. Uh, these are not to be given too much weight. Yeah. Of course, we use those terms, we use those concepts, but not to give them too much weight because they are conceptual in nature. Thank you, the, oh, body, the body mind is instrument if you take a look experientially oh, meaning right now uh, at the body it's hard to find the body you, you have to sort of go to the mind in order to find the body you have to go to okay well Yes, there is a body because I am sitting on a chair and I'm not dead. You have to go to the mind. Experientially, it's like it's, it's as if there is no body. I, I don't experience my body except when I... There's hunger, then I experience hunger, or there is a headache, I experience a headache. But we're not really experiencing a body in in like this this very concrete way. But but we need to take a look to see that, you see. Because if you tell somebody like that, as somebody in the street, you know, hey, we're not experiencing a body in a concrete way, you're going to think you are crazy. You see? So I'm talking about taking a look and noticing that, okay, in fact, in this moment, it's like there is no body. Because <laughs> all there is, is is awareness and consciousness. That's this only. Mm -hmm. Only reality, only reality. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? This doesn't mean yeah, we, we don't do things, you know, if we get hungry or or it's time for us to, you know, right. uh, life somewhere. No, we do that. 
So we're, we're in this calling, we call it matter, but it's really just awareness. But we're calling it matter. It's like, a, you know, it's just labeling. Yes. But, you know, the thing is, to comprehend, you said there is one reality. There aren't two realities. If there were two separate realities that would never interact, who cares? If there are two realities, then re how do we know there are two realities? Because they're interacting. <laughs> how can we? Know? How can our reality know that there is another reality if we're not interacting with it? The thing to understand is there's one reality. You can call it matter, you can call it mind, you can call it, I don't know. It doesn't matter what you call it. And but you cannot deny awareness that that this is we're not just sitting having a conceptual conversation about oh there's one reality we're going to write a book about it we're talking about that that we are this reality that everything that everything we experience is this reality there is just this reality it's your thoughts your sensations everything you perceive the world you perceive it's all this reality it is there there are manifestation of this reality it's like this reality you look this way it's out and you look that way it's a river but it's one reality and the sense of being the sense of being is always there awareness i am you being cannot not be see and that doesn't come and go because in terms of your dreams one moment you're flying over the mountains next moment you're swimming in the in the in the river in the lake that changes and then another moment you're not there anymore it's just a herd of antelopes you know you're no longer riding you're no longer riding the pink elephant. So all of that changes. But there is one thing which doesn't change. The dreamer. Awareness, consciousness. That which perceives. That which perceives doesn't require a form. No. Because it knows itself, it perceives itself, it knows itself. There is self-knowingness. And there is a knowing that there is an antelope here running in the field. In ignorance, we believe that awareness depends on form. <clears throat> but it doesn't. Because you're aware that you're aware. And that's a very proof that no form is required. I'm aware that I'm aware. Awareness is aware that it is aware. And it is aware that it is. Boom. Bingo. No form. But then the mind goes, oh, no, 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 no. No. You're aware that you're aware because of the body. But there is no proof of that. It's just a belief. It, uh, out of the thin air, out of thin air, I pull this argument. I just pull this argument that, oh, no, the reason why you know that you know or you know that you are, you, that awareness is aware that it's aware, is because of the body or because of gravity or because of uh, the galactic field. <laughs> And we, you know, put it, they put, out, put it out of out of thin air. There is no evidence for that. But once we believe that, and we're cooked, it's like we go back to reality is the body mind. I am mortal, and I better do my best here to have the best time I can. You know, because holy cow, you know, time is. Spinning on me, I'm gonna run out of time. But deep down, we're we we don't we don't buy it because it's not satisfying. It's not fulfilling. 
any any narrative is not fulfilling. Only understanding liberates you. Understanding about consciousness, about truth, liberates you. And the experience of liberation is peace and happiness. Okay. Thank, you, thank you, Maggie. Right. Right. Lynn's been waiting for a while. I'm going to give her the chance to. So, okay, thank you. Yes. Appreciate it so much.